Well, hey everyone, welcome back to The Alex Stone Show. I'm your host, Alex Stone. I'm on a mission to spread the light of the gospel into every aspect of life. And yes, you heard me correctly, I did say every, including the things that most Christians do not like to discuss, such as politics. Today's show, I have another very special guest for you. I've had the opportunity to interview this man not once, but twice, and this is the third and final time that I'll be interviewing him uh, while he is in this position. He is the former Lieutenant Governor of the State of Missouri and the current Governor of the State of Missouri, Governor Mike Parson. Governor yeah. Parson, how are you doing? Now it's good to see you again. Good, good to, to see, see you, you as well. It's been yeah. about three years since I've uh, had you on my show. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but uh, a lot has changed, a lot has grown. Yeah. Uh, my first question for you, um, you know, obviously you were dealt a pretty interesting hand, uh, yeah. you know, with being Lieutenant Governor, then going straight into being Governor um, with, with Eric Greitens and everything, and then also you've had to deal with COVID-19. Uh, with all of those things that you've had to deal with, what has been the most difficult thing for you uh, as Governor of Missouri? Yeah, well, I, I think just from a personal scale, uh, the family has, has to be the foremost. It's the most difficult thing because sure. you miss out on so many things. And it's a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you, you have uh, different people around you every day. You have security around you all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, e even as we're talking about faith, going to church is a little bit of an ordeal, I bet. you know, with security. But I really miss time with my grandkids mm -hmm. and my family, just all the little events everybody gets to go to. Uh, you know, that's been the biggest sacrifice. Sure. Uh, now, has there been challenges since I've been governor? Uh, <laughs> yeah. As you well know, uh, we could go name a whole list of that. But at the end of the day, it's what all prepped you to get to that point and was you prepared when that day come, mm -hmm. which goes back to faith. Absolutely. And it goes back, we all have a purpose for what happens to us in our life. Absolutely. And God controls that purpose. And you just got to make sure you know uh, who you're answering to every day. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's something that I've learned. You know, I haven't held any office. I do plan on running for office, but mm -hmm. everything that you do goes back to your faith. What is your foundation? Who do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe in? And we believe in the same God, Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins and rose from the grave. And when you have that as your foundation, it makes everything so much easier, uh, you know, despite things like COVID-19 or uh, unexpectedly yeah, becoming right, the governor right, of the state right. of Missouri when you weren't planning on that. Well, you know, you go back to it for every decision you make. Absolutely. You know, uh, you know I, I'm 69 years old. You're sure. a young man. But what I will tell you, that basic foundation of faith that was built in your life will be the same thing that you'll rely on when you're my age, Absolutely. when you still have to make tough decisions. Because just, just life's a continuous circle of things you have to adjust to all the time, sure. and you have to be prepared for it. So when nobody has the answers uh, in this old world today, and you live in a younger generation of technology and sure. Google and all this stuff, but at the end of the day, you will find out there's only one answer when mm -hmm. you really got your back against the wall. You'll know Absolutely. who to go to. No, you're exactly right. You know, the last time that we talked with each other, we were dealing with the whole COVID-19 situation yeah. and yeah. everything. Uh, and I, I asked you, um, you know, if the Biden administration were to have any kind of unconstitutional overreach, what you would do. Um, m my question for you now, yeah. uh, three years later, I, it seems like, um, has it been easy dealing with the Biden administration um, in, in just everything? Obviously, Americans are suffering with the economy. Um, yeah. They're struggling with gas prices. They're struggling with groceries. Illegal immigration is at right. an all-time high. Has it been easy to deal with the Biden administration? It's been, it's been the worst thing we've had to deal with <laughs> over the last four years. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just many things you mentioned already. I've been to the border two times. Yeah. You know, never thinking I would really have to go to the border from the state of Missouri to protect Missouri citizens. Mm -hmm. I sent the National Guard down there. I sent the Highway Patrol down there. Sure. And I was doing things that the federal government should have been doing, that that administration should be doing. The reason that people question me, some of the liberal media would question, say, well, why are you sending taxpayer money? Why are you spending taxpayer money? Why are you sending us? Because sooner or later, I got to protect the people of Missouri. Yeah. And when you start talking 15 million plus people come across the border, they will be here at some point. Yeah. And we're going to have to deal with them. And you know, and you look at all the things that's brought fentanyl, sure. sex trafficking, children's trafficking. I mean, it's just like, if you put all the people that has crossed that border into a state, it would be one of the top 10 states in the United States. It, it is so sad to see. And, so, and obviously, thank you so much for what you've done by sending uh, the yeah. Missouri National Guard to Texas yeah. to help with uh, the situation there. 
Um, one of the issues that uh, Senator Bill Igel was running on was deporting uh, the illegal immigrants in, in the state of Missouri, working with President Trump on that. Obviously, uh, Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe won, won the primary. Right. Uh, I, I believe he'll win uh, the general election just in like, what, 14 days now? Yeah, it's, it's I'll probably that one is over. Yeah, it, it's um, crazy. You know, what else can your administration do in the next few months w of you being governor to to help with this border issue because it, it is a crisis and many people they bring up you know this bill that President Trump told Congress to, to shut down but it, the reason why it was shut down is because it was a bad bill it would have codified uh, catch and release into the United States of America it would have led in 1.8 million illegals it was a bad bill it, what well, can you as governor do yeah, to, well, to well help first of all let me just say this that is the most pitiful excuse to blame President Trump for alleged a Congress action yeah. Well, those are big boys and big girls up there, you know. Uh, but it was a terrible bill. Yeah. It, it was a terrible. You're still letting people come across the border Absolutely. by the thousands on a daily basis. You know, we're fighting wars in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're fighting conflict in Iran. Israel's in the Gaza Strip trying to fight the the, the, the Hamas. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we can't even take care of our own people. And, and we're spending millions and millions of dollars to, to do other things. Mm -hmm. And I think for a governor, you are the firewall of the federal government. Absolutely. You know, now, can I, can, and I know uh, Senator Igo said, you know, he'd round everybody up and deport them. You know, you don't have authority to do that to start off with. Sure. I mean, we just <laughs> don't have it at the state level. I wish it was that easy right. that we could make all those calls. But if you, you get, first of all, you got to get President Trump in office yep. to somebody that's willing to go after that. Because if not, the federal government's not going to do anything. Absolutely. So then the only thing you can do is you can start trying to figure out, okay, who are these people and how do you prevent them from coming to the state as much as you can? Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is you just really can't do that because they're going to come into the state from different avenues sure. to, to be able to get here. Until the federal government acts, uh, you know, when, when we do discover they're here illegal, what we consider illegal, the problem is the federal government turns around and says, well, we don't consider them illegal even if we arrest them. Undocumented. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, and, and what they say, and then you're stuck, you know. Uh, you gotta have leadership at Washington, the, mm -hmm. the federal government, but uh, you can do as much as we can to keep them from being here, to make sure they don't get IDs, to make sure mm -hmm. they don't get into the systems. But sure. again, the federal government controls so much of that when of people come across I know the that when Kerry Lake was running for Arizona governor, with, who I've met many times, very, very great, you know, strong uh, woman, uh, one of the things that she wanted to do was declare invasion. Is that something that, that governors can do to, to kind of protect um, their state from illegal immigrants? Well, I, I think all those things, we need to push it the envelope as far as we can. Those are things for the attorney generals to try to figure out what we can do. Sure. Can we literally, if we found somebody come in here, can we ship them somewhere? Can we really just round them up and send them somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Can we take them back across the border from a state perspective, you know? But then again, what is the reaction going to be? Is the federal government going to come down here with the <laughs> Department of Justice, the FBI, like we've seen them, you know, weaponize those agencies Absolutely. to to a state? But look, this is going to be an issue. This is probably one of the biggest issues in this election coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, that really on the federal level, of what we're going to do. But it's got to stop. You got to you got to stop it. You know, and then you got to figure out how you get all these bad people mm -hmm. out of here. Absolutely. I yeah. want to go kind of back and forth between kind of more serious issues and lighthearted issues. I do have a question for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, you know, we're in the great state of Missouri. Right. Kansas City Chiefs have been doing pretty good the past yeah, yeah. few years. Yeah. What do you think the Chiefs record is going to be? Uh, and do you think we'll win the Super Bowl? I think we've got a great chance of going back. So, so now that you brought the Chiefs up, and you know I'm a diehard Chiefs fan. Absolutely. So here's something. No other governor can take claim in, in our country. And the has. So since I've been governor, the Kansas City Chiefs have been in the AFC Championship game all six years I've been governor. <laughs> they, they, they have been so in the cool. Super Bowl four times yes. since I've been governor. It's yeah. never happened to any other governor in that period of time. They've won three of the four. Mm -hmm. I said I would never go to a Super Bowl unless the Kansas City Chiefs were in it. Hmm. The three I went to are the three they won. And then the one I didn't <laughs> go to was COVID. So. Sure. Uh, for me, I mean, they got a two, you know, a, a two peat right now. So if we can get a three peat, I'm going to take claim to that too. Even though I may be out of office a month, maybe you're the I'm going to take credit for it. Charm for yeah, for yeah. The I'm, going tell, I'm going to tell the chiefs, hey, you need to keep me around for a while. <laughs> sure, yeah. But it's been a fun journey, you yeah, know, sure. to do things like that. And uh, you know, those kind of things, you know, when, when you have this job, uh, the stress, and just everyday people and everyday mm -hmm. jobs. You need a little break every once. You need to be able to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. Sure, you need absolutely. to have a little fun and. Uh, 
You, you, you need to realize how blessed we are to live where we live. Is it challenging sometimes? Yes. But man, I've been in other countries now since I've been governor. I would not trade this state, this Absolutely. country for nothing. It is a beautiful state and a beautiful country. And um, it's a shame what's happened under, under the is. Biden administration. Uh, one of the other issues that, that I want to address, um, when Bobby Kennedy was running for president of the United States, one of the issues that he was talking about was, uh, well, actually two of them were uh, the vaccine issue um, and then the health epidemic in the United States of mm -hmm. America, especially with children. Um, and I actually gauged my audience a little bit for this question. And one of the sure. uh, questions that I received was, what could you in the next, coming, uh, next couple months of, of being Missouri governor do to help protect against um, you know, vaccine intervention yeah. with the food supply? I, I, I think for one thing, let me go to the vaccine first. I think one thing you gotta be real careful is government is not taking choice away from people. Sure. You know, I, I mean, that's one thing. I mean, uh, go back to COVID, mm -hmm. uh, when everybody's trying to mandate a vaccine right. or not. You know, people are smart enough to know whether to get a vaccine or not. Absolutely. You've got to leave that up to them to, to, to be able to do that. Matter of fact, when you talk about the vaccine, this is a little bit different in your question, but you think about what we went through during that, but yet 15 million people can come across the border mm -hmm. and they don't have to have a vaccine. Right. to come here, which I'm not advocating for that. But what I'm saying, it's we insanity. kicked people out of the military because they didn't, but we'll let 15 million people come here with all kinds of different diseases and everything else, and we, we don't even care. So, but I, I think what you do with vaccine, if you look at some of the effects of it, it is such a growing industry, and I don't think any of us, I, I'm sure not smart enough to know what all it takes to make these ingredients, what all the effects are, but I do know vaccines do have affect sometimes unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. I think if you talk to people, some people in their families would, would blame the vaccines on autistic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, things like that happen. Sure. You know, I think there's, we don't even know the effect of COVID-19 yet, mm -hmm. what those vaccines did to everybody. We do know there is now after effects to it because it happened so fast and everything. So w when you talk about vaccines, I think we've got to be real careful that government is real careful about any kind of mandates, anything you do in that arena. And you go back to what I said all along, you've got to give people choice. If you want one, go get one. And if you don't, don't. And what I, what I find very interesting about that is the same party that's advocating for, you know, that has advocated for ma vaccine mandates is always the party that says my body, my choice when it comes to yeah, the issue same. of abortion, yeah. which it's totally different. Uh, and you and I yeah. know that the issue of life and um, it's, it's guaranteed to us in the Constitution. Yeah. Um, it is promised to us in yeah. the Scripture. Um, but they always claim my body, my choice. But when it comes to vaccines, they're like, you have to do this or else you'll get fired, as you mentioned, with, with the government. It's, it's such a shame. It, it isn't the same, but it is. But, but what you're saying is, is what is my rights as, as an individual in the Constitution right. is, is what it is. You know, to protect the unborn should be the thing that we all should put at the forefront. Absolutely. Because life is, is, is the most precious thing we all have. Neither one of us be here stopping today if it wasn't because of, of the decisions we've made, our families have made to make sure we have the opportunity to have life. Absolutely. But when you, when you say exactly what you're saying, is all of a sudden you're saying, okay, I want the right to be able to do that, but I want to mandate you or somebody else to do something that they don't agree with mm -hmm. fundamentally, vaccines. Absolutely. You know? And, and the reality of it is those become political issues and it becomes again, whose rights are we taking away mm -hmm. and who gets to make the decision of whose rights you take away? Mm -hmm. And that's where we're at Absolutely. today on, on those two issues, these very issues. So mm -hmm. there's one thing I've learned being governor, I, I will tell you, Alec, you gotta trust the American people. You gotta trust the everyday person out there that's working hard, doing his job, Absolutely. raising a family, trying to make a living, setting in the pews, trying to keep his faith in order, and he'll make the right decision. Him, her, the families, they can figure this out. We, we politicians are not smarter than they are. Even, in, you know, I, I'm leaving this arena, but I see too many people coming up here that think that they have all the answers, mm -hmm. and trust me, they don't. Mm -hmm. I didn't have all the answers to sure. COVID. I didn't have all the answers from multiple times, mm -hmm. but again, that's where faith comes in. That's where your experience as life comes in. It's where you do the things that you think are right for the everyday person, no matter where they live. Absolutely. Be a public I, I, servant. I certainly agree with you. Um, if I remember correctly, you're a farmer. I am. 
I am. So that, yeah. that's, that's close to you. Yeah. Um, one of the issues that we see in the United States of America, and even Missouri, is China buying agriculture oh, yeah. and farmland. Yeah. Right. Um, you did sign an executive order yeah. which banned uh, any foreign adversary or citizens of any foreign adversary from buying farmland within 10 miles of any yeah. military property, um, which I think was great. I do have a question on that, sure. though, however. W why not sign an executive order that would ban that completely? Um, with the issue that we're facing we, of China buying our farmland. We would love to do that. Okay. And that's one of the issues that I'm glad you brought up too, because we don't have the authority to do it on the Constitution. Okay. I was, I'm pushing the envelope to do it the way I've done it. <laughs> sure. I, I really was, okay. because I'm basically saying you've got to go to the agriculture director. What happened, the General Assembly didn't pass anything, statutory-wise. Hmm. So we were stuck with the thing as, as an executive order, which is not the right way to do it. Let's right. just say it's not the best way to do it. I won't say mm -hmm. it's not the right way. But the legislative body didn't pass the language to prevent that. We should never let adversaries ever be in our state Absolutely. for anything. Agreed. You shouldn't do it. But as governor, uh, I could have did an executive order saying that, but again, the Constitution don't allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. And if I'm gonna say I'm gonna stick with the Constitution sure. and what I do, I can't be the one violated either. Uh, that know? makes sense, and, Absolutely. And, but what, what happened, the General Assembly just didn't act on it which I thought they would, but then it got to be such a political hot cake, and then it was everybody's running for office and all that kind sure. of stuff. But so that's why we did the executive order saying, okay, let's do what we legally can okay. around those military installations. And then we basically put it into the agriculture, we had to put it on the director of agriculture because it was farmland, mm -hmm. just to be able to do the executive order. That so it's, it's kind of a legal mumble jumble a little bit of sure. how we had to do it. Um, the purest way to do it is the general assembly just needs to come in here and say, Hey, we're going to pass a bill saying you can't do that, period. Yeah. You know? And that, then you've got to be sense. real careful. You know, a lot of people, your adversaries are one thing, but then you have a lot of countries we do business with every day that are good partners, sure. tra you know, when Absolutely. it comes to trade. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, then, so that's, that's, that's what happened. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for, for sharing that. I, yeah. That was one of the things I was confused about most is why, yeah. why not just ban it? Yeah, but, why don't you do it all? Thank you yeah. for... Well, I'd like to have done Thank it you all. For, for sharing that. It, it does make sense as far as the... Uh, powers you are given as, right. as governor. Yeah. Um, I do have a couple uh, quick questions. Uh, this one's a little bit more lighthearted. Yeah. Um, my dad and we, you know, my family, we travel all the time in Western yeah. states. My grandparents live in Arizona, so we drive. Yeah. And one of the things that my dad observed is that the speed limit uh, in many of the Western states is 75. Yeah. Is there any way you could change the, the speed limit in Missouri from I, 70 to 75 on the, on the highway? Yeah, yeah it suits me fine, okay. but I'm not sure I can get that passed. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, you know it's kind of like you brought that up, makes me think of the I-70. Sure. We're going to do I-70, make it six lanes, brand new surface and everything. I mean, that thing will be smooth and nice when okay. we finish that up. But yeah, everybody in the state of Missouri, I got to be careful what I say here, but most everybody knows you can drive over 70. You know, to be right honest about it. And we're all a little guilty of it. Right. I think we all say, okay, if we drive 75, we're safe. Yeah. You know, and I guarantee if your dad's saying the speed limit's in 75 out there, he's probably running about 80. You sure. know, I mean, it's what you do. You just sure. try to jump that five miles an hour uh, across that and everything. So sure. That's well, kind of if how I it get goes. pulled over, I'll say the governor of Missouri <laughs> said I could. Said you could go 75. <laughs> Awesome. You can try it and see. Well, yeah. we're, we're running out of time, and the final yeah. question I have for yeah. you is, after you leave office, what yeah. are your plans? You know, people ask me that all the time. Uh, you know, I want to spend time with family. Sure. Uh, I will tell you that. that that'll that be the number one priority. I want to take my five-year-old granddaughter to school. Mm. I simply just want to get up and take her to school cool. uh, to kind of get back to some sort of normal life if there is such a thing. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things I do plan on doing, uh, I plan on making uh, a little bit of trip around the state, going to churches. There you go. Uh, and I want to go back and I want to tell everybody how much uh, faith meant mm. uh, in my time Good. as governor, how much Powerful. prayers, how many. I would get letters, Alex, from people from churches. I didn't even know where the churches were. It'd be right. a Sunday school class. And we're praying for you for the decisions you have to make today. Sure. And they were decisions I had to make that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I want to go back and tell the churches and the congregations, well, you may be a long way from Jeff City, you may not know the governor, but what it is you do every day, day in and out, has an effect on government. Sure. And I want them to understand they need to keep doing that. Absolutely. You know, to, to whoever's in that position, and whether it's me or anybody else. Absolutely. Um, and I, look, there's one thing I've learned in life, uh, of all the experience I've had, 
you cannot be the governor of Missouri without mm-hmm. having faith. Absolutely. If you, if you do, you're going to fail miserably because mm-hmm. you don't have all the answers. Absolutely. Governor Parson, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, on Alex. Show. Good to see you again. Great to see you as well. Yeah. Thank right. you all so much for listening. God bless you all, and goodbye.